The following is a presentation of KSL Sports. First and 12. A total roundup of BYU and Utah football at the expanded Big 12 Conference. Brought to you by Macy's Grocery Stores. Your hosts are Mitch Harper and Alex Keery on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. Welcome back. Happy Sunday to you. Yes, first and 12 right here on KSL News Radio and on the KSL Sports Zone every Sunday. Mitch Harper and myself bringing you a Big 12 breakdown. And of course, it's a rivalry week edition of the program. And next week at this time, Mitch, we'll be talking about the rivalry game itself, have, having uh, just experienced it. But this week, all we can do is talk about the what ifs and what will happen. Connor Pay, BYU's offensive lineman and offensive captain. Guy's been hurt for the last few weeks, had surgery on that foot. Trying to get right for that Utah game. I know it was a goal for him. Don't know if he's going to make it back for that one. But Connor gives you a lot of insight as to a, kind of where this team's head has been and what's been going right for these guys and what's changed from one year to the next for this BYU Cougars team, who's now undefeated and number nine in the country. Here's Connor Pay. Culture hasn't changed since January. You know, it's uh, we're not doing anything different. Um, you know, it's uh, the the message was the was the same. You know, as it has been every week, you know, Kalani gave me the chance to address the team in the locker room before the game. Um, you know, he usually he usually picks one of the captains to come up and speak to the team before we take the field. And, you know, essentially all I told the team is that, you know, we've earned the right to play well Monday, Monday through Friday. We had a great, tough week of practice. And, you know, when you when you practice that way, you you earn the right to go out there and be confident. and at that point, all you got to do is just go and execute. And, uh, and, and that's what we did. You know, we went out there and we, we were able to strike first, which is always good. Um, and, you know, tried to keep the foot on the pedal, uh, for as long as we could probably could have done a better job of that in the second half a little bit. Uh, just got a little, got a little sloppy up front, a little bit on some of those runs late in the game. We we're trying to eat some clock where we probably could have put up some more points, but, um, you know, I think uh, I think overall the team is just doing a really good job of resetting and compartmentalizing the individual weeks, where it's like especially now coming up with these next couple of weeks, getting ready to play Utah, where it's uh, you know, the last eight weeks have n- absolutely no bearing, none, on this game, and the following weeks have no bearing on this game. All we can do is focus on what's right in front of us. And that's what this team has been able to do. Uh, you look at the run game, and we, we had a lot of conversations last year about the struggles there. It's completely different now, and now it's going to another level. You got LJ with back-to-back 100-yard games. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to us what is different with the run game? Why is it working well, and why is LJ getting going now? Well, I think for one, uh, the the obvious change is that we have a new run game coordinator, you know, and so the schemes are a little different, and uh, – you know, he's, he's added some good stuff to us and, you know, coach Woods has been awesome. And, you know, obviously having LJ back fully healthy, um, is a big deal too, just because, you know, he's such a smooth and effective runner. Uh, but I think just the consistency, uh, of the technique and, uh, the assignments of the guys up front and tight ends, running backs included, um, and even the receivers too. And the quarterback, I mean, the run game's an 11 man deal. You know, you can you can look at any of those explosive runs, and you'll see receivers blocking their butts off. You know, trying to trying to get those extra yards, and you know, I think uh, obviously there was a massive commitment to the run game in the off season, and you know, people took that to heart, especially us up front. And so I think just the consistency that that Coach Woods brings, and and the schemes, and just the way that everybody's bought into it, you know, and uh, and now we got. Uh, LJ and, and Hinkley had almost an 100 yard game as well. Um, and so uh, I think we have guys that are starting to find find their way through this scheme and through this system. What are you noticing with uh, the defense during practice? I know you you know you focus a lot on the offense obviously because that's the side of the ball that you play on, but like what's going on on that side that Jay Hill's got dialed up for those guys that you, that you notice and you go, oh, they're they're operating. Do you notice like, hey, they're operating at a different level this year? There's there's something else going on. 
Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, all of spring ball and all of fall camp, that's all I get to see. Yeah. Um, you know, is their stupid faces. <laughs> and, uh, it's an ugly you know, bunch. It's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's been, it's been great. I think one more year in Coach Hill's system definitely makes a difference on that front. Because now it's, you know, you got, you got the guys who are, who are leading the charge on defense like Jack Kelly and people like that who are, who are analyzing the formation and, and making calls based on that, you know, and stuff. And, you know, obviously Jack is experienced in this system, having been at Weaver. And so now, now the rest of the guys too have a full year under their belt where it's like now they're picking up on formational and motion cues faster. But I think even beyond that, you know, I think the, especially in the front seven, cause I felt like the secondary actually played pretty well. Um, you know, all things considered last year with how banged up they were and some other things, I think the secondary played pretty awesome last season. It was one of the, one of the few bright spots of last year's team. Um, and now I think that the front seven is kind of catching up to that and, you know, being, being the dominant force that coach Hill wants them to be, you know, because that was, you may look at the stats and be like, oh, man, you know, UCF rushed for 150 or 160 or whatever that was. But that's one of the better rushing teams in America. Yeah, they were number two going yep. into that and, game. Uh, I don't know. What, do you know what they were averaging yards per game on the uh, ground? It, had, it was, it was, it was 70. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it, you guys, I, I think th you I kept think it was, them 90 under their average. And they had that last, they had, yeah. they were at 150 with like two and a half minutes left. I mean, the reality was is they had already kind of shut down, I think, uh, RJ, Harvey, and then. But, yeah, we, that was the very first thing we noticed was, hey, a team that averages 275 yards on the, uh, a game on the ground, 180 was, I think, what they ended up with. But that was that's a phenomenal day considering that they can't throw the ball either. Yeah, no, and so like you're holding them almost 100 yards under their average. Yeah. You know, and so that was the defense's goal going in. When you play against great rushing teams, you're not going to hold them to zero. You know, that's just not a deal. The, the thing that you need to do is limit the chunk runs. You got to limit explosive plays against – off uh rushing attacks like that the one two three yard gains even four yard gains sometimes are wins for the defense you know and so i think they did a great job with the exception of a couple plays where they let some big runs out for the most part it's gonna happen with the guy know, who's the number five rusher in the country right yeah. i mean he's yeah darn good. exactly and so i think just how the the only time the defense has struggled this year is when they played outside of themselves and outside of the system you know, and that's that's what we saw a little bit against Oklahoma State. I think we talked a little bit about that last week. But um, I think they're doing just such a good job of playing to their strengths within the, within the system that Coach Hill is teaching. Or it's like you can't you you can't play outside of what the defense is doing and expect to perform well because defense is so much about gap and assignment sound. You know, offenses score. Uh, points and get chunk yards when guys are either caught out of gaps or caught out of an assignment. And so I think that's what, uh, you know, that's what this defense has been really good at. Really assignment sound. Everyone's bought into their one eleventh. You don't have to do anything more or anything less than what's expected of you. Great competitors will use anything they can to their advantage, anything to motivate themselves. I'm curious if you guys – locker room coaches whatever tried to use the two and a half point underdog thing as motivation against ucf we were shocked couldn't understand it and yeah. now, now it looks even more silly but do you guys what do you guys do to motivate yourselves and did you use that to motivate yourself uh in or in orlando sure sure i mean seeing that you can't help but feel a little bit disrespected right but yeah that uh the the Vegas, what Vegas wants, what the media says, and all that stuff matters a whole lot less than the expectations that we put on ourselves. And so, sure, that might be some, that might be like the icing on the cake, right? If you needed a little extra juice or a little extra motivation, but the core, we're, we're intrinsically motivated, not extrinsically motivated, you know? I love those weekly check ins with Connor on your show, Alex. They're great stuff always with, with Connor Pay and, you know, hopefully he can get back to for that Utah game. It'd be great if he could. But uh, the good thing is for BYU is that his his absence has not derailed their success. Bruce yeah. Mitchell's been a star, I think. TJ Woods has been a phenomenal offensive line coach. Their scheme is yes. just totally different, and that's been the big vibe this year that he's talked about. Is all those guys are ready, man? Because TJ Woods, that was the big disparity on that O line last year was just coaching and scheme. 
Yeah, it's it's been night and day difference from last year, and it's a big reason why BYU is eight and zero, and Connor Pay still. Even on the road, he's on his scooter, you know, hauling around <laughs> right. in Florida last week, uh, you know, helping you know be as much of a coach as he can with this team. But hopefully, we see him soon suiting up for the Cougs. We're taking our final timeout. Next, we'll hear or we'll get to what's next on the Big Twelve schedule. With along with the rivalry game, it's a loaded week as the chase for the Big Twelve title oh, heats up. We're going to be breaking it all down next here on First and Twelve. Mitch Harper, Alex Carey. The show brought to you by Macy's. Get the freshest fruits and vegetables. Here at Macy's, happy shopping. More after this on First and Twelve.